we are talking about Jesus sermon series about Jesus last week pastor Ilya talked about Jesus being our savior the week before that I talked about Jesus being good God and the week before we talked about Jesus being unique and different from anyone else this morning I want to dive into the topic of Jesus being the baptizer the baptizer I genuinely believe according to John chapter 10 verse 10 the Bible says that Jesus says I came to give you life and more abundantly Jesus comes to give us life and Jesus also comes to give us life that's more abundant the life I believe is the life that Jesus gives us is the eternal life amen and that eternal life is within us now and it continues forever but after giving us the eternal life Jesus Christ is also his second assignment is, is as I would like to call it is to give us abundant life now many times we think abundant life is getting a car, getting a wife, and a we, a dog, and a retirement plan, good health, and that's good. But abundant life is something more than that. It's when Jesus introduces us to the Holy Spirit and we have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and that causes our life to be abundant because you can have the toys you can have the gimmick you can have the all of the gadgets in life you can have even all the external things in life and still lack its abundance because Jesus not only gives us salvation he also introduces us to the Holy Spirit that's why John the Baptist said Jesus is the Lamb of God and for us the Lamb of God is a very very um, foreign language because we don't offer lambs the only thing we do with lambs is eat them that's about it and they taste really good but they're expensive for Jewish people the lamb meant something very special because they offered a lamb regularly to God as a sacrifice and Ilya did a very beautiful message last week about why Jesus was a sacrifice because God is a holy God and God is loving and God doesn't stop being holy because he's loving and so love and holiness combined together God says your sin needs to be punished but I don't want to punish you but if I don't punish you I stop being God and if I punish you I stop being loving so he provides Jesus to take my punishment this way he remains holy and loving at the same time so the lamb is for that reason Jesus says I am the lamb of God John says he is the lamb of God but then John also says he is the baptizer with the Holy Spirit you would think John would emphasize the healing ministry of Jesus the deliverance ministry of Jesus the ministry of peace to people but John says Jesus is the lamb and Jesus is the baptizer Jesus did not baptize no one in the Holy Spirit when he was on this earth. That assignment only started when he went to heaven. Jesus wants to do two big things in your life. Give you eternal salvation. And the second most important thing, and listen to me very carefully. It's more important than healing. It's more important than financial breakthrough. And it's even more important than deliverance. Is to introduce you to the person of the Holy Spirit and allow you to have the same relationship with the Holy Spirit that he had when he was on this earth. In that is the miracle of the greatest miracle. It's the miracle that unlocks every other miracle. There is no eternal life without Jesus and there is no abundant life without the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit is the abundant life. In Jesus is the eternal life and Jesus gives me eternal life and when he gives me the eternal life he doesn't end there he says now I want to introduce you to the person of the Holy Spirit Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit amen let me quickly look at just few steps that our relationship with the Holy Spirit can go further from the life of Jesus just five simple steps. If you're taking notes, you can do so on your phone or th these notes will be available on a YouVersion Bible app. The first one is what Jesus had with Holy Spirit is Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And you are also born again when you become a Christian by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does the miracle of bringing you to Jesus. That's why many of us, we didn't come to Christ just randomly. In my random, it may seem random to you, but it was nothing random because the Holy Spirit was working there. I remember hearing a testimony of my friend Zach, who was in Buddhism. 
and who was in false religion and who was deceived and and the worst part he was hurting he was suffering and he tried to commit suicide twice at one time somebody interfered actually somebody came in when he was trying to commit suicide and stopped that and the other time the gun didn't go off the bullet didn't go off now these are not random these is the holy spirit working behind the scenes causing this young man not to end his life but to bring him so he can give his life away to jesus that's why before you get born you're first conceived and you grow in the mother's womb i call that conception events that holy spirit orchestrate around your life before you actually come and give your life to jesus christ that's why non-christians many times will say things like i felt god someone was there someone helped me and you may say oh that's this was just god is not with you actually he is with every person who doesn't know god otherwise they'll never meet jesus but the Holy Spirit causes the miracle of birth and this this is where we meet the Holy Spirit first every Christian has a relationship with the Holy Spirit every Christian has a relationship when you get saved you have the Holy Spirit even if you don't speak in tongues even if you don't prophesy even if you don't see visions even if you don't feel anything the Holy Spirit lives in you he indwells in you and you already have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Even when you fall into sin, you still have a relationship. Even if you struggle with certain temptations, you still have a relationship. Even when you struggle with doubts, you still have a relationship. When we sin as Christians, when we struggle as Christians, our relationship is not affected. Our fellowship is affected. Our fellowship is broken our intimacy is broken but our relationship is still there any married person understands that there's a difference between relationship and intimacy you can be in the same bed and not be intimate and i'm not talking about physical intimacy you can be in the same car and not talk to each other you can be in the same house married legally and not even have a connection to each other no fellowship no love and no intimacy why? Because intimacy is different than relationship. A relationship is you get married, you get the paper, you move in together, you assign your house together, your credit cards, you have children, you raise them together. But intimacy, that's a completely different thing. And my desire today is that you recognize you already have a relationship, but the Holy Spirit wants intimacy with you. He wants a closeness with you. How is that intimacy achieved? It's very simple awareness attention and affection you become aware of the holy spirit you become attentive to the holy spirit and number three you become affectionate meaning you uh, you share your affection your desire for the holy spirit Moses was in the wilderness and the burning bush was there and the bible says instead of just keep walking by he was aware of the burning bush that's the first step awareness of the you become aware you tell yourself the holy spirit is here you tell yourself according to the word of god holy spirit lives in me and you become aware of the holy spirit the second thing is that you have you give him your attention every husband knows you can walk from work and you're aware your wife is in the kitchen and you grab a remote control or you grab your phone but you're not giving her attention and your awareness will never lead you to intimacy because it never led you to attention and that's why wives many times complain of this thing you're not paying attention to me i feel like you're not with me you're like listen i am right here literally four feet away from you how close can we get i feel like we're so distant we're in one bed and that bed is small because we got it on discount how come you're saying we're so far apart because why because while you're aware of her you're not giving her your attention See, for the Holy Spirit to be intimate with you, you have to give the Holy Spirit your attention. When you give Him your attention, intimacy begins. And after attention comes affection. What is, what is, how does it mean? Well, practically, how does it work, preacher? It's simple. It's you're a Christian. You sit at home. You drive in the car. You're taking a shower. You're eating. And you fill your thought with the awareness. The Holy Spirit, who created everything, didn't take a vacation he's not sleeping he's living right here and then you give him your attention 
mentally, the way you give your attention mentally to the things in the game, to the, to the other things, where you focus your thoughts on a particular topic, you focus it on the Holy Spirit. And after you give your attention, you release your affection. With marriage, it's simple. Your wife, for example, is in the kitchen. She's doing something or she's cleaning something or she's busy with something. And not only you're aware of her, not only you're trying to give her attention, but you come around, you give her a hug from the back. Kiss her on the cheek for just five seconds and walk out. And for next two hours, she'll be confused. <laughs> what just happened? And I'm not talking about that this has to lead to something. Lead absolutely nothing. You leaving the room, that's what it has to lead to. That's exactly how Holy Spirit wants us to do it with Him on a regular basis throughout the day. When we give Holy Spirit our affection and we say, Holy Spirit, I love you. The Bible says, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will remain with you. Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Holy Spirit, I'm having a very big business meeting today. Holy Spirit, I don't want to do that meeting alone. I want you to be there with me. Holy Spirit, I need you so much. You're not just begging for something, you're inviting Him and something begins to happen. Many times you begin to feel His anointing and His presence, but you will definitely begin to see His power flowing in your life. Every Christian has a relationship, but many Christians don't have an intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The same way many people get married, but not many people enjoy their marriage. Because just because you have the legal paper being married, that does not mean you will actually enjoy your marriage. The second thing that we see is Jesus is filled with the Holy Spirit. Not only Jesus was born, this means we all have relationship, but Jesus is filled with the Holy Spirit. This speaks of Christians being, through our intimacy with the Holy Spirit, being filled with with the Holy Spirit. It's interesting because in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, Apostle Paul commands us to be filled with Holy Spirit. I used to think the Holy Spirit randomly picks people he fills during the week and if you're the lucky one, you get filled with, the, with His Spirit. But if you're unlucky, you wait for the next time that He picks you. But the Bible in here makes us to understand the Holy Spirit doesn't decide whom He fills we get filled with Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit and then it compares don't be drunk with wine for example. Alcohol does not choose randomly people on Friday night whom to make drunk. Jack Daniels doesn't have a list and on, on the weekend he just says him, her and them. Why? They're depressed, they're discouraged and he says you know what I'm just gonna break through the door in their house I'm going to open their mouth and get inside of them and I'm just going to like fill them up. How many of you know that never happens? I mean and if you're going to one like one of that pastor who was driving a car a police officer pulled him over and says uh, I smell alcohol and he says sir this is water and the police officer says no this, this is alcohol. He says well what do you know? Jesus did it again. <laughs> Unless you're that crazy. Otherwise, nobody gets drunk sitting in their house or mowing the lawn and just for nowhere, you just got drunk. No, you go to a place where there is liquor. You ask for them to bring something to the table and then you, without nobody's force, you take that, you open your mouth, you drink that in, that goes inside, starts creating wobbly things inside of you, you start feeling happier, you start feeling louder. If your personality was very shy, you become very extrovert, you change. And then you can, of course, you get a DUI, you get locked up in jail, and, and the rest of this problems. <laughs> the Holy Spirit fills us the same way. You come to church, the Holy Ghost Club, Malachi in here, Alexandra, He's offering drinks. <laughs> and many of us, the, the lip is zip. Hmm? 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 And it's, it's just literally rubbing on you, but it's not going inside. Why? Because you gotta open your mouth. When you open your mouth in worship, the Holy Ghost begins to come in. When you open your mouth in prayer, the Holy Ghost begins to come in.
when you open your mouth to speak in other tongues the Holy Ghost begins to come in you don't get filled because the Spirit fills you you fill yourself with the Holy Spirit by putting yourself in the right place and opening your mouth the job to be filled with Holy Spirit is not Holy Spirit's job now it is yours and mine and the Bible says if you don't get filled with the Holy Spirit the Satan always has a counterfeit it's gonna be alcohol for some it's gonna be weed for others it's gonna be Netflix for some it's gonna be social media for some it's going to be eating shopping you will always be filled if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit but whatever you're filled with if it's not the Holy Spirit you will not be fulfilled by it it will always feel empty you will at the end of the day you will always feel still broken only the Holy Spirit fills and fulfills us come on somebody that's why the Bible says walk in the Holy Spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh in other words when I am full of the Holy Spirit I will still have lust of the flesh it means I'll still want to do bad but I will not have the power and the, the push to do it because something else is filling me when you're filled with alcohol very soon you will start making bad decisions when you're filled with Holy Spirit you will be making right decisions remember Holy Spirit doesn't fill us we get filled with Holy Spirit he's already available it's like oxygen it's there you breathe it in you take it in and the way you do it is by Christians it's this little thing that's causing for most of us it's the root of all of our problems and we open it in every place except church and the reason we can't zip it outside of the church is because it's zipped in the church but if you unzip it in the church you will have the power to keep it controlled outside of the church many of our married problems will be solved if we just literally muzzle our mouth zip our lip amen Jesus is born by the Holy Spirit. Jesus is filled by the Holy Spirit. I want you to see Jesus is led by the Holy Spirit. Remember this, whatever you're filled with will determine how you will be led. If you're filled with alcohol, alcohol will determine how you drive. It will determine how you behave. Many of us want the leading of the Holy Spirit but leading is automatic after filling. You will automatically start being led by the Holy Spirit after you're filled. That's why your prayer and your desire shouldn't be Lord lead me, Lord fill me. I choose to be filled with Holy Spirit. I read your word Lord, I worship, I go to the church, I fill myself with the Holy Spirit and then you begin to be led by the Holy Spirit. Typically Holy Spirit leads us sometimes by common sense. Somebody's hurting, you don't have to hear a voice from heaven to go help them. Common sense. The Bible says any among you is poor, just any. That's it. We have to do that. A lot of times Holy Spirit leads us by promptings. Promptings is that you have this, I call it tension. Pay attention to your tension. It's when you pay attention to the tension. It's that little thing that doesn't leave. It's in your heart and you know it's not really you because you're anti this. It's like to give, to pray, to do something that, that naturally we are not drawn toward that. I, was, I just came from Massachusetts last weekend and when we were there on the first, I think first service, I have this prompting in my heart to give my Apple watch away. And I was like, no, this, this can't be God. It's my watch. I already gave one to John Chi this year. That's it. I, no, no. And then in that same service, I have another prompting to give my phone away. And I was like, well, definitely can't, can't be God. I mean my phone and the watch and then to do a service on Sunday of a sacrifice service sacrifice is when I challenge people in that church not to bring offering but to give a sacrifice to God to their church and I was like I've never done this outside of our church what if these people will think I'm crazy and that I have to model it by give a sacrifice myself and I was like ah oh, we're here in Massachusetts for different reasons not to you know give money and to give things away and and I wrestled with it I had a hard time sleeping that's when you know it's the Holy Spirit it bothers you and I'm like God just leave me alone let me minister everything will be fine why do you have to bother me like this next morning I literally I can't and I can't tell my wife because I feel like if I tell her she will push me over the cliff she will say yeah if God tells you do it 
and, and I don't want that. I want to be able to talk myself out of it because I'm thinking this is me. So I try to argue, argue in the shower and, I, and I'm literally tense. A little bit in the morning, I am a little bit frustrated because I feel that, that, that prompting and that leading. Sunday morning, a Saturday night I think came in and I told my wife and I said, babe, I give up. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. whatever chip, let chips fall where they fall. And I found out the pastor actually was saying, I was secretly hoping, he said, Vlad, that you do a sacrifice service on Sunday morning. I said, okay, one confirmation. We give a sacrifice with my wife and about four hours later, I get a text message of a person who says, do you have a cash app? And I said, I don't know what that is, but I'll download it. Sounds good, cash. I like cash. I download the app and you won't believe it. To the dollar, the same amount I gave on Sunday morning as a sacrifice, not an offering, but as a sacrifice. I received in a cash app by the evening of Sunday night. And then the next day we decided, I decided like, well, since God is already, I'm sensing this is the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Apple watch is gone. The, the phone, I'm just using it for now, but it's going to be gone in a week and stuff. And, so, and I decided to take the step. And then of course, God blessed us in a way that I've never seen. I've been to many trips. I, I travel a lot, but uh, how they blessed us, I've never had this in my whole life. And they didn't even know what they were doing. They didn't even know these decisions that I made, but God knows how to lead you. Remember, the Holy Spirit led Jesus not into a cancun, into wilderness. Not into anything nice. It was a sacrifice. It was painful. It wasn't easy. Some of you, the Holy Spirit is leading you this week to fast. The moment I mentioned fasting, you had this prompting. You know what? I think I should try that. You're like, no, that's not for me. That actually might be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives promptings. If you don't ignore them, He will guide you further and more and more. Amen? And you will see miracles. I want you to write down the next level of knowing the Holy Spirit is Jesus was sustained by the Spirit in the wilderness. Sustained. What does that mean? That means once He got to the wilderness, we don't see the mention of the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was actually tempted by the wild, uh, by the demons and the Bible says wild beasts were there. And Jesus was everything he experienced at the river Jordan now was being questioned by the devil. And Jesus did not look for the latest album by Elevation, Bethel and Hillsong to keep him through the wilderness. He wasn't looking for John the Baptist to come and cheer him up over there and give him some, you know, some another prayer. He wasn't looking for the river Jordan to get dunked again so to have the cloud and to have the voice and the dove. The Bible says Jesus start quoting the Bible. Why? Because the Holy Spirit leads you to a place where only the Holy Scriptures will get you through. This can set your life free completely from this. The Holy Spirit leads you to a place that only the Holy Scriptures get you through. In the wilderness, the Holy Spirit hides in His Word. No wonder Paul said in Ephesians chapter 6, and the evil day, the sword of the Spirit. Do you know where the Holy Spirit is on the evil day? In His sword, not in your feelings. Wilderness, is for every person who seeks to get to know Holy Spirit more. You start this path, you feel God, God is doing great things and then comes this dry spell where you don't feel anything, seems like the circumstances are against you, everything is coming against you and in that moment you have a decision. Are you going to rely on your feelings which were so good in here and they are so bad in here? You have to make a switch. You switch from your feelings to what the Word of God says because the Holy Spirit who was filling you with glory here hides in here. Man, I wish somebody would have told this 40 years ago to me. I had to learn this by my personal experience. The Holy Spirit hides in His Word. What do you do? You can do what Israel did. They came out of great experience with God in Egypt, hit the wilderness and they complained. Or you can be with, do what Jesus did. Jesus came out of great experience at the river Jordan and Jesus confessed the word of God. Hmm. These people spent 40 years and this man spent 40 days. What do you like better? 40 days or 40 years? 
wilderness you can't escape it you only determine how long you are in it by whether you confess or you complain you rely on your feelings or you rely on your faith that determines the length of your wilderness it's interesting that the devil is presented in the bible as a lion if you know anything about lions you'll find out one thing lions have the least stamina from any animal in the jungle kingdom lion's heart is very small in comparison to his body lions can't run too long that's why lions never catch their prey they only attack their prey and if their prey runs lion stops because he doesn't have a stamina satan doesn't attack us by running after us he waits and waits and waits and he attacks and if you resist you think oh he won't leave me he doesn't have the guts to keep pursuing you he will leave you. That's why the Bible says he will flee. Why? Because he doesn't have a stamina. That's why God will use the wilderness to develop your stamina. Why? Because that is the only way you will always, always get away from his grip. Amen. And lastly, is Jesus was empowered by the Holy Spirit. So after going to the wilderness, he was now full of the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles started to happen. Prophetic words were given, words of knowledge, raising of the dead. I believe that a lot of times behind our wilderness comes the power of God. Power of God comes into our life by two ways. Our personal faith or our intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Sooner or later we have to develop the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The power of God is what changes you. It's what changes your life. You become different. You become so different you don't recognize you. It's possible. You start having your own testimonies. I, I'm I thank God for Ivan's testimonies. I thank God for Daniel's testimony. I thank God for Zach's testimony. I thank God for your testimony. But at the end of the day, I want to develop my own testimony. You need to have your own testimony. When the Holy Spirit uses you in a way, that's incredible. I remember uh, earlier this year during one service, I had a word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is just a, like a thought in my heart that somebody in the building had a gastritis and I said it during the service somebody here has a gastritis and we're gonna pray for them and we prayed nobody came up after the service to say hey I had a gastritis could you pray for me again or like thank God I don't feel anything and stuff so the service is over nothing happened a week or two weeks later a lady sends us a letter with a thank you note and a $50 check to the church and so I read the letter and the letter says this, I've been having gastritis and I don't remember, it was eight or seven years. I've had this for a long time, gastritis. I came to church. I was the visitor at your church on Sunday morning. And there I was sitting all the way on the back by the nursery. When I heard the word that somebody's being healed of gastritis, she said, I felt heat and my stomach caught fire. And so, and the crazy part is the lady actually didn't stay for the prayer. She left. She left in her car, her stomach burning. Went back home and decided to eat the very foods she couldn't eat before and wrote us the letter saying, now it's been a few weeks and I'm completely cured of the issue of gastritis. I only heard word gastritis. I don't even know really what it is. But I don't have to. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that does the work. I remember just recently, not long ago, we had a prophet in here, Prophet Dixon and his wife. And during the worship time, I heard, I saw an image. And in an image, I saw somebody's neck. And specifically this side, it was red. Red, and I saw, I had this knowing, this like, you, you just knew that, you know, that it was somebody who woke up with a spasm and they couldn't move their, their, uh, their face. They couldn't move their neck. And, and it was somebody who was watching the service. And so I just begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, bring healing and everything. At the end of the service, a lady comes here with few kids of hers. And she said, I woke up this morning wanting to come to your church because you guys had prophets. And I had this big problem. I couldn't turn my neck. And then I was watching the services, waiting for them to start ministering. And when you declared that word, literally, my neck, like somebody snapped it. It started to turn without any pain. I got my kids ready and I still made it before the prophet started to minister. It is the Holy Spirit that uses us like that. It's not me. It's I'm the vessel and so are you. Last weekend, 
uh, we were praying for the for the sick and it was very interesting never seen this where almost every person who got healed his name was Alex I think six six or five names I think even a girl uh, you know she she's Alexandra but she goes by by Alex from stomach issues to back pain and everything and but I had a word of knowledge that somebody was there who had a problem with their with their shoulders and their lower back due to a injury I don't remember which injury now was work or accident and they see chiropractor all the time and God wants to heal him and so as we prayed you know actually that testimony didn't show up next day a guy comes to me and begins to say he said Vlad my wife was here yesterday and that word was for me but I wasn't here he says that word is still in the air he said just place my your hand and I need that word to just bring healing into my life so we prayed and his ribs at first they were healed and then the lower back pain was completely gone and the man was completely cured The Holy Spirit is with us here today and He wants to minister to it today to us. We don't deliver people, the Holy Spirit does. We don't heal people, the Holy Spirit does. I want to also encourage anybody here today who have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You can receive that today. We are a church that believes in all the... We, we believe in God. We also believe in the front cover of this book, the back and the table of content. Everything. Disciples spoke in tongues. We love that too. You may say, well, that's just strange and that's just weird. I think what is strange is and weird is when people curse. When people speak in other languages and glorifying God and they, but, but I don't know what I'm speaking. Half of the time you're speaking, you don't know what you're speaking. It's completely fine. It's the Holy Spirit that's speaking through you. And today we will give an opportunity for that to happen in this, in this room before we pray for people. And just how do you receive that? It's very simple. You open your mouth and you say, Holy Spirit, fill me. How do, and how do you speak in tongues? Whatever comes to your mind that's not English and that you don't know, you begin to speak it. You say, but then that's me. It is going to be you. The Holy Spirit doesn't manipulate you. He uses you. He uses your faculties and ministers to you. Amen? Church, I want you to rise to your feet right now. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.